Uh, this machine also works on a volumetric system. So each of these different buttons are designed to volumetrically produce a single sh uh, short, a double short, a, s a single long, or a double long. Um, now, these come kind of preset, which we also program it to produce any volume you want. So for example, if you want this to be even longer, I could program that to be as long or as short as I want. You don't necessarily have to stick to what the machine op uh, has operated for this. I think too, it's also has a manual shot button. So if I want to just pull my shots for as long as I want, I can just hit that button and stop it at any point uh, I want through the extraction process. The other cool feature this has is a little um, screen right here, yeah. touch screen. This one here controls your pressure, your temperature yeah, for your unit, and the that's temperature that's for your steam. So you're able to freely program to hit the temperature mm -hmm. and the, that you want for your espresso extraction and the temperatures you want for your steam. Right now I have it set to 90 degrees uh, Celsius for my espresso and then 130 degrees Celsius for my steam. Uh, a little yeah, bit hotter, so I get more consistency yeah, in my pressure yeah, pressure steam. Yeah. Ideally, when it comes down to temperature, especially when it deals with uh, the type of grossing profile you want, if I'm using a lighter so rose, you generally want to have a lower temperature. If I'm using a darker rose, you're going to be hotter. Yeah. 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 The topic we're today is a grossy uh, blend. This one here is more on the dark side, so 99 degrees. I'll be making three drinks. I'll be doing Espresso, I'll be doing a cappuccino, and I'll also be doing a lot Just so you guys can see the extraction process, I'll just run the wrong way, and I'll also speed it back to the Good. So let's start with the espresso. So, normally, when I'm dialing in my coffee, I always get to weigh out my shots. You get a general idea of exactly what I'm kind of hoping for for my extraction. Um, I'll be using a double basket today. Weight-wise, I'll be using around 18.5 uh, breakfast coffee. Extraction uh, time around 26 to 28 seconds of extraction time. I am going to be using the manual button for most of these shots just because I don't want to have time to program it to the volume yeah, I want it to. Uh, and these ones are a little bit too short or too long for the volume I want to start to be in the manual shots. Okay, uh, so, thank you. Uh, thank I think when it comes down to going into this method of coffee extraction, the general recipe I tend to give people is if you're using a double basket, anywhere between uh, 18.5 to 19.5 is a kind of a good range to be. If you're if you're dealing with a 20 gram basket, you can go to 20 grams. You know, this is just a good kind of starting starting time. Time wise, your extraction time should be roughly about uh, 25 to 30 seconds of extraction time. Though that can go a little bit higher if you're dealing with more of a lighter roast coffee. Um, this is just again more kind of like a good starting base from there. My yield, so how much coffee should actually be extracted in my cup, should be about 38 to 40 grams of extracted extracted espresso. Um, so again, if you really want to get to the real fine like tuning of your espresso, um, this is kind of the information you want to look for to kind of help guide you in terms of clearing that consistent shot. Once I know exactly how many seconds I need to produce the grams I'm looking for, then I can program my grinder to produce that amount of coffee based on the amount of seconds. So if I know that I need 19.5 uh, grams of coffee, I know it takes about eight seconds to produce that. I can set this to eight seconds, and then every time I done do my grind, uh, my shot, we're gonna get that 18 or 19.5 grams of coffee each time. It does require um, kind of tinkering with it first. So if you already set this to eight seconds, you have to get that into the so you notice that when you hit the grind button, so in terms of the grind itself, the grind itself, it's a pretty, it's a pretty quiet grind. It's not like a jackhammer or anything that is very so It's pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. so, so we're just going to add a little bit more. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So the size of the burrs that help with that yeah. If you have like a grinder with like smaller burrs to it, it's gonna take a lot longer. 
Also, noise-wise, it's going to be a lot easier. But also, at the same time, because they're such a small blade, because they're running against each other so much, and they're so close to each other, that friction is going to cause the coffee to also fluff up as well. So this is why the bigger burrs are usually recommended, because where the coffees are not further away from each other, so when it's grinding, there's less chance of them fluffing and coming up. One thing I should mention, because this, this is a trend that's kind of happening online is a lot, spray your beans with water. The problem with that because if I take my coffee and I spray it with water and then run it through the grinder, those, that coffee is already moist, and as it starts grinding, there's a higher chance of it coming together. Now, it also depends on the coffee you're using. If you're using a layer roast coffee, the chance of that's a little less, because that coffee in general is a lot more, has a lot more water to it, so it's a drier coffee, it takes a little bit more um, force to actually grind that coffee, so it doesn't really stick up as much. But if you're overly spraying it, it's going to cause it to clump. At the same time, you're putting water through an electrical machine. It can also damage it as well. So normally I recommend if you are spraying your beans, if you're using a single dose grinder, it's fine. If you're using a copper grinder like this, don't do that at all. Just pull your shot at that same. Um, online, they'll say it helps reduce um, friction. It helps reduce. It helps clean the blades. Yes. But the end result can be to damage your grinder in the long run. I even know one cafe that was spraying their coffee each time they dose their coffee in a uh, eight thousand uh, dollars grinder. After a while, the grinder ended up getting damaged on the inside because of that buildup, and now destroying them. Yeah. Very expensive. Price. So again, I don't recommend doing that if you're using a separate machine. If you're using a single dose grinder, sure, but just don't do it super, super often. So let's pull our shot. So the tamper I'm going to be using is a calibrated tamper similar to the one that you'll get with the Phillips machine. One for one. And what I like about the calibrated tampers is that because it's spring-loaded, I'm able to get consistent 25 pounds of pressure each. Now, this one has different springs from 10, 25 to 30 pounds. Really depends on the coffee you're using, but normally 25 to 30 pounds is more than enough for your, for your tamp. And because of the way it sits on the portafil on the port filter, every time I tamp it, I make it a nice flat surface, less chance of creating channeling or irregular tamping. Um, so it's a little bit So the screen also acts as a clock timer, so this way you don't need a separate timer to time it. This one here you can actually see exactly what you're hitting with time that you're hitting. The 5500? So right now the pressure is going to be hitting around the, it doesn't indicate on this guy here, but ideally it could be hitting around that guy. Oh, sure. So something about 10 bar pressure. Ideal pressure for extraction is anywhere between 9 to 10 bars of pressure. Some people do a little bit more so 